unmasking the most infamous duos in their criminal legacy. Bonnie and Clyde Bonnie Parker and Clyde Burrow, known collectively as Bonnie and Clyde, were two of the most notorious outlaws of the 20th century. Their exploits during the Great Depression captured the imagination of the nation and left an indelible mark on American popular culture. Bonnie Parker was born in 1910 in Rowena, Texas, and was raised by her mother after her father's early death. Despite her impoverished upbringing, Bonnie was intelligent and loved creative writing with a particular fondness for romantic poetry. She married at 16 but was soon abandoned by her husband, leading her to seek a different life. Clyde Barrow, on the other hand, was born into a poor family in Ellis County, Texas in 1909. He was the fifth of seven children. From a young age, Clyde exhibited a rebellious streak, and by his late teens, he was already involved in petty crime. Now, before we dive deeper into unmasking the most infamous duos and their criminal legacy, we'd love to take a moment to invite you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. This way, you won't miss out on any of our engaging content. Your support allows us to continue bringing you these deep dives into the infamous figures from history. Now, back to Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde met in 1930 in West Dallas, Texas, when Bonnie was staying with a friend to assist her during her recovery from a broken arm. Clyde happened to drop by one day, and it was, as they say, love at first sight. Their personalities complemented each other. Bonnie was drawn to Clyde's wild, rebellious nature, while Clyde found Bonnie's intelligence and spirit irresistible. Their life of crime started with small robberies, mostly of stores and gas stations. However, their activities escalated over time, and they became known for bank robberies, although they often preferred smaller targets because they were less risky. The duo, along with various members of their barrel gang, were also involved in several violent confrontations with the law, during which they were believed to have killed at least nine police officers and several civilians. Their most notorious crime, perhaps, was the daring daylight raid on Eastham Prison Farm in 1934, designed to help fellow gang member Raymond Hamilton escape. This event marked them as public enemies and led to a significant escalation in efforts to capture them. Bonnie and Clyde managed to evade capture for several reasons. First, they were extremely mobile, using the powerful Ford V8 car to outrun local enforcement and crossing state lines to evade jurisdiction. They also used a network of safe houses and sympathetic acquaintances to avoid detection. Finally, they were not above using violence to escape when cornered, which made law enforcement hesitant to engage them. Their lives of crime ended violently on May 23, 1934, when they were ambushed by a posse of law enforcement officers in Bienville Parish, Louisiana. The officers, who had set up the ambush based on a tip from a former gang member, opened fire on Bonnie and Clyde's car, killing both outlaws. Despite, or perhaps because of, their violent end, Bonnie and Clyde became symbols of the rebellious spirit of the era. They were often romanticized as modern-day Robin Hoods, a perception fueled in part by the famous photographs of the pair posing with their guns. The reality was, of course, far more violent and less glamorous. Their story has been the subject of numerous books, songs, and films, the most famous of which is the 1967 movie Bonnie and Clyde, starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. This film, with its blend of romance, violence, and social commentary, helped to cement Bonnie and Clyde's place in popular culture. Their influence can also be seen in the fascination with outlaw couples in media, from movies to television shows to music. They've become enduring symbols of rebellion and defiance, their names synonymous with a certain type of wild, romantic outlaw spirit. Their love story, set against the backdrop of their criminal exploits, has been romanticized and mythologized, often obscuring the stark reality of their violent lives. Their relationship was complex and dynamic, with Bonnie believed to be the more passionate and impulsive of the two, while Clyde was the planner and executor. This dynamic, along with their blatant disregard for the law, made their story all the more captivating to the public. They have also influenced the fashion and style of their time, and even today. The image of Bonnie Parker with a cigar in her mouth and a gun in her hand, wearing a beret, is one of the most enduring images of the 20th century. Clyde, too, with his sharp suits and fedora, set a precedent for the gangster chic look. In the realm of literature, Bonnie and Clyde have been the subject of countless books, both fiction and nonfiction. Their story continues to fascinate authors and readers alike, resulting in a range of portrayals from the romantic to the brutally realistic. 
Bonnie's own poetry written during their crime spree has also been published, offering a deeply personal insight into her thoughts and feelings during the tumultuous period in her life. In the world of music, their story has been used as a metaphor for destructive love or unbridled passion, with references to the duo appearing in songs across various genres, from rap to country to pop. Even in the modern era, their story continues to resonate. The 2013 miniseries Bonnie and Clyde and the 2011 Broadway musical Bonnie and Clyde are recent examples of how their tale continues to captivate audiences. Their names are invoked in discussions of crime and punishment, love and loyalty, and the thin line between right and wrong. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, whose real names were Robert Leroy Parker and Harry Alonzo Loggenbach, respectively, were two of the most notorious outlaws of the American Wild West. They were known for their train and bank robberies, their involvement with the Wild Bunch Gang, and for their infamous final stand in South America. Their story is one of adventure, camaraderie, and the pursuit of freedom against the encroachment of law and order. Butch Cassidy was born Robert Leroy Parker on April 13, 1866 in Beaver, Utah, to Mormon parents who had moved westward for a better life. Cassidy was the eldest of 13 children, and he fell into a life of crime at a young age, leaving home as a teenager to cowboy and rustle cattle. His outlaw alias came from a combination of his mentor's name, Mike Cassidy, and Butch, from a brief stint working in a butcher shop. The Sundance Kid, born Harry Alonzo Loggenbaugh in 1867, hailed from a Pennsylvania family. At the age of 15, he traveled westward, and during a stint in Sundance, Wyoming, he was caught stealing a horse and served 18 months in jail, earning his nickname. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were involved in numerous high-profile robberies throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries. As members and later leaders of the Wild Bunch, a gang of outlaws operating in the American West, they perfected the art of the double-tie bank and train robberies. This involved taking over entire towns or train stations, controlling all potential threats, and then calmly robbing the bank or train. The gang's heists were daring, well-planned, and often successful. Cassidy and Loggenbaugh likely met in the early 1890s when the Sundance Kid joined the Wild Bunch. Cassidy, one of the original members of the gang, was already an established and respected figure within the outlaw community. They soon became close friends and partners in crime, their personalities complementing each other. Cassidy was the charismatic planner, known for his wit and aversion to violence, while Sundance was the enforcer, a crack shot who was nevertheless described as affable and likable when not involved in his criminal pursuits. Cassidy and Sundance managed to evade capture for many years due to their intelligence, careful planning, and willingness to relocate frequently. They used the hole in the wall a remote hideout in the mountains of Wyoming as a base of operations. They also had an understanding with certain corrupt lawmen who would look the other way in return for a share of the loot. The duo also made clever use of the vast, wild landscapes of the West, often escaping into the wilderness where lawmen could not follow. They were also known to use decoys and false trails to throw pursuers off their scent. In 1901, facing increasing pressure from law enforcement, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, along with Sundance's companion Etta Place, fled to Argentina. They tried to live an honest life as ranchers, but eventually fell back into crime. Their end is shrouded in mystery. According to the most accepted account, in 1908, two American bandits were cornered by Bolivian cavalry in the town of San Vicente. Refusing to surrender, they fought to the end. And according to local reports, one man shot the other to spare him from being captured before turning the gun on himself. While it's impossible to confirm with certainty due to a lack of concrete evidence, it is widely believed that these two men were Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. The story of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, like those of many outlaws of the American West, has been romanticized and immortalized in popular culture. Their tale of camaraderie, rebellion, and adventure has been told and retold in various forms, from books to television shows to music. They were portrayed as endearing antiheroes, their crimes often downplayed in favor of highlighting their loyalty to each other and their quest for freedom. Their most famous portrayal is undoubtedly in the 1969 film Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, starring Paul Newman and Robert Redford. The film, which won several Academy Awards, painted a charming and somewhat romanticized picture of the outlaws, focusing on their friendship, their shared love of Etta Place, and their adventures both in the U.S. and in South America. 
The movie's memorable scenes, witty dialogue, and unforgettable ending combined with the charisma of its lead actors contributed to the enduring popularity of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, solidifying their status as iconic figures of the American Wild West. In the realm of literature, their story has been the subject of numerous books and historical researches. The mystery surrounding their lives, their crimes, and especially their deaths continue to captivate authors and historians alike. Their legacy also lives on in the various locations associated with them, from the town of Sundance, Wyoming, to the remote hideout of Hole in the Wall, and even to places in South America. These sites have become tourist attractions, drawing those fascinated by the myth and lore of the American Wild West. As we close our exploration of these notorious duos, we want to pose a question to you. Given what you've learned about the lives of Bonnie and Clyde, and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, do you believe they were products of their circumstances, or do you think their actions were solely their own choices? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. We greatly appreciate your engagement and look forward to hearing your perspective. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the world of the most infamous criminal duos. Until next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, and as always, keep learning.